let's talk about continuity. And we say that a function f is continuous at a point a if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. What this means is that let's say we define some point a on our curve. If we take a point in this curve, they start here, and as we inch over towards the limit, find that the limit is the same thing as the point that we are approaching, essentially meaning that we do not jump off the curve at any point. We can stay on the curve continuously. So that is what continuity means on a very intuitive and graphical level. So when we do problems and we try to check continuity, we're looking to find three things in all of our problems. One is we have to show that the limit as x approaches a, wrong in here, limit as x approaches a of f of x exists. That is an important point here. Two, we want to show that f of a also exists. And three, we need both of these to be equal to each other. So once we show that one and two exist, we also need to show that they are the same thing. So we're going to take a look at this graphically, and we're going to do this with functions as well. But before we jump into continuity, specifically, we're going to talk about discontinuities. Because if something is continuous, it will not show any discontinuities. Of discontinuity. Uh, one is called a removable discontinuity, two is called a jump continuity, and three is called either an infinite or asymptotic in, uh, discontinuity. So I have these in order here. So the removable one is something like that happens at x is equal to negative three graph. What this means is that it is a single point that is missing in a line. So in other words, the limit exists, but the point is defined somewhere else. And it's called removable because we can just redefine the point. Let's say if we have it defined down here, well, we could just redefine the function. We say that, oh, at x equals three, let's just fill that in. So removable discontinuity, uh, in your head, you could even think of it as like fillable discontinuity. A jump discontinuity is exactly what it sounds like. If you have something like this scenario, where you have a curve that is uh, at one point, it jumps up and the curve continues at some other point, uh, then you're looking at a jump discontinuity. These are really easy to see graphically, but if you're just looking at a function without a graph, it's difficult to tell if it's a jump or something else. Uh, the last one is your infinite discontinuity. This happens at any uh, asymptote, so this would be at like x equals 2 in this case because it's an asymptote. It'll never reach any point on x equals two. X equals two is just not defined at all. So we'll go infinitely upwards in the y-axis, getting close to x equals two, and we'll be going down after x equals two, but at that point x equals two, we have no point that is actually defined. These are the different types of discontinuities you might see. Now, a continuous function on an interval or at a point will not show these discontinuities. So the first question we'll have, is f continuous at x equals zero? What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the function first in our conditions, and then I'm going to graph it. So uh, remember our three things that we have to check. First of all, uh, I'm gonna check condition two first. I want to show that f of zero exists, because if f of zero doesn't exist, we don't have to look at anything. Alternatively, we could also start and check to see that the limit as x approaches zero of f of x, sorry, this. But that might be a little bit more work. So first, let's check to see if this happens. So what we want to do is we want to take uh, f of zero, which should be equal to one over zero. Oh, there's our problem. There's our problem. Look at this. Zero in the denominator. We cannot have a zero in our denominator. So of course, f of zero just does not exist, it's not defined. And because f of zero 
we know that it is not going to be continuous at that point. So at x equals zero, it is not continuous. We don't have to check the limit at this point. We know it's not continuous. So if we were to graph this, uh, we would have a graph that looks a little bit like this. Hopefully I am not super far off my line. There we go. And it should also look a little something like this down here. So when we check x equals zero, which is this point, remember intuitively what we're asking ourselves is if we put ourselves on the graph at some point and we follow that line, we should be able to get from the right side of x equals zero to the left side of x equals zero without lifting our pen essentially. But this simply cannot be done in this case because there's an asymptote at x equals zero. So graphically, we also can see that it's not continuous. Let's do a piecewise function, slightly more complicated. So here we have g of x is equal to x squared minus one if x is not equal to one. And we say this is one if x is equal to one. So uh, let's just make this a little bit smaller so we have some room to work. Check our first condition here. I want to see that the limit as x approaches sorry, this is zero, this is the limit as x approaches one of g of x exists. So this is our first step. So uh, the limit as x approaches one of x squared minus x over x minus one is going to be equal to limit as x approaches one of well, let's factor out an x on top. So we're going to have x times x minus 1 over x minus 1. And this will be the same thing as the limit approaches 1 of, well, we'll cancel the x minus 1 on the top and bottom, so x. So this is equal to 1. Okay, so the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x exists, and it's equal to 1. Okay, now let's check to see that of one this. Okay, so g of one equal to, well, let's see. It says up here that if x is equal to one, then we get one as an output. So g of one is just equal to one in this. Okay, so g of one exists, the limit as x approaches one of g of one exists. Now, if it's continuous, you just have to have that one, the two. So the limit as x approaches one of g of Will the g of one? Yes, this is the case. So because both of those conditions are met, you can see that g is continuous at x equals one. Now let's graph this to see what it looks like. I'm going to erase this stuff because I need to make a chart to see what our values are here. Because I don't know what this graph looks like yet. Okay, so. We want to see what these graphs look like, so let's try to figure out what we're plotting here. So let's just plot a few points. Do x equals negative two, negative one, negative point five, point five. Let's do zero, point five, one point five, and we can plot some points down. So I'm not going to write out all the steps here. I'm going to do most of the arithmetic in my head, but you can verify on your own. So if x is equal to negative 2, we're going to get 4 plus 2, which is 6 over negative 2. So we're going to get negative 2 as a result here. So this will be this point down here. If x is equal to negative 1, we're going to get 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. If x is equal to 0, we're going to get 0 over negative 1, which is 0. If x is equal to 0.5, we are going to get negative 0.25 divided by negative 0.5, which is 0.5. So the reason I'm not checking 1 here is because 1 is not going to be defined. Because we cannot have 1 minus 1 equals 0 as the denominator. I'm going to skip that point to see what's happening. So if x is equal to 1.5, this will be 0.25 minus 1. Which is 0.75, negative 0.5. Okay, I think how does this work out? This should be, if I'm not mistaken, 
And if we put 2 in, we're going to get 4 minus 2, 2 over 1, which is so uh, as we can see here, this function x squared minus x over x minus 1 is really just a straight line. But we have to be careful because that point is not defined at x equals 1. So, well, if x is equal to 1, we have this point filled. So as you can see here, uh, although the piecewise function isn't continuous, when we take a look at each function independently, when we combine them both together, and we see that if x equals 1, we're filling in that number 1, it is now continuous. Because if we say take a point here, and we follow the curve, we can get past that point just by staying on the curve. At no point do we have to pick up our pen to get back on the curve after x is equal to 1. So that was the functional approach and the graphical approach. See your experience with algebra, functional approach, by actually doing the work and the math, find the limit, to find the value, can often be faster graphical approach if you have to do it yourself. Okay. Now, sometimes a function is not continuous from both sides. It's only continuous from the left or from the right. We're not going to do any examples of this in most calculus courses. We don't at all. Um, but I will come here. So if a function f is continuous at point A from the right, it is the same definition as before, except we specify that x approaches A from the right, plus there. And if a function f is continuous at point A from the left, then we denote the same thing, except we use minus sign above which is a so if you try to find continuity from both directions really what you could do is show that it's continuous from the right and the left but of course if you find the limit from both sides continuous from both sides okay let's do a final example so you can pause the video by yourself or you can watch me work okay i want to see if f of x 4x minus 6x squared over 2 plus 2x cubed is continuous at x is equal to 1. So what I'm going to do first is I want to show that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x exists. So let's check this out. The limit as x approaches 1 of 4x minus 6x squared over 2 plus 2 cubed is equal to well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of uh, this common factor of 2. I'm just going to divide everything by 2. This gives us 2x minus 3x squared over 1 plus x. Okay, well, when I look at this function, I feel like I could just plug in some values. We don't really need to do anything. In fact, I don't even really have to... Do any factoring at this point. I just did it because I'm used to it, but if we take a look at the denominator, if we plug a 1 into the denominator, we're not going to get 0. Plug it in. So this will be 2 minus 3 over 1 plus 1. So this is just negative 1 over 2. So the limit x approaches 1 of f of x is just equal to negative 1 half. Okay. Well, now we have to see. Does f of 1 exist? Well, yeah, this will exist. We can plug in our values. So this will be 4 times 1 minus 6 times 1 squared over 2 plus 2 times 1 cubed. If we do the math, well, this is the same thing. Negative 1 half. So we ask ourselves, is it continuous if x is equal to 1? The answer here is going to be yes, it is. Why? Because our limit as x approaches 1 of f of x exists, and f of 1 exists, and the limit and f of 1 are equal to each other. Therefore, this is continuous. Now, there is going to be an additional exercise video that comes after this, so there will be more practice questions on continuity, but this is just an extra section. Uh, there are also going to be some extra videos available remember so for two dollars a month you can join the youtube channel for extra money and get some extra exercises uh, of course the standard exercises and lecture videos to everyone but if you want to 
pay two bucks to support me. There will be an extra lecture set there with extra exercises, and this will continue for most of the calculus series. Everything might not be up yet, but in the future, there will be some, but just letting you know.